Good morning, everyone. Let's go dive into our moment of focus, uh, which is from the book, The Cosmic Christ by Matthew Fox. Take, my friends, this is my flesh, this is my blood. Can there be any more drastic language in order to wake you up? What could Jesus have said that is better than that? This piece of bread is the body of the whole cosmos. If Christ is the body of God, which he is, then the bread he offers is also the body of the cosmos. Look deeply and you notice the sunshine in the bread, the blue sky in the bread, the cloud and the great earth in the bread. Can you tell me what is not in a piece of bread? The whole cosmos has come together in order to bring to you this piece of bread. You eat it in such a way that you come alive, truly alive. The eating and drinking of the bread and the wine then is not about a cannibalistic exercise of eating the flesh of Jesus. Rather, it is a cosmic Christ experience. One is receiving fully of the sacred bread and life force of the universe itself. All is sacred. And we remember that in a group way by sharing the wine and bread as a community. What, after all, is more intimate than eating or drinking? We are eating and drinking the very sacred food and drink from the edges of the universe when we are eating and drinking this divine food. Amen. Now, American civil rights champion Fannie Lou Hammer famously once said, nobody's free until everybody's free. And we collect our shared resources so that together, all beings may experience their, their birthright of freedom. We all deserve to be free. Freedom to live in safety, uh, freedom to live with bodily agency and with dignity. So let us share our gifts that that might be so. And with that, would you please join me in prayer for our offering blessing. Wisdom of the Christ, bless our gifts of money, time, and skills to the flourishing of your people. For we desire a world where nothing is hoarded and abundance abounds, that all may live in the rich landscape of freedom and belonging. May it be so. Amen. And today's scripture passage is from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 48 to 51, and I am reading from the Inclusive Bible. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, and if you eat it, you'll never die. I myself am the living bread come down from heaven. If any eat this bread, they will live forever. The bread I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So this might surprise some of y'all. I've talked about uh, this with, with some of you, but not all. Uh, but I, I love communion. Like, I, I'm always looking forward to communion. I love the act of communion. Now, that said, uh, I'm not someone who is, you know, I, I, I'm not big on rituals. Uh, I'm not someone who is necessarily overly concerned with tradition. I know. You're all shocked, I, I, I'm sure. But that doesn't mean that I think rituals and tradition are unimportant. I'm just personally not someone who thinks that rituals and tradition, you know, should take precedent over what is really, what I think is really important, such as compassion and inclusivity or equality, welcoming, et cetera. But communion has always been one of those rituals, one of those traditions uh, that I have always cherished. 
uh, its symbolism and its meaning for me has always been very life-giving. It's always been very powerful. On many occasions, the act of taking communion has really offered me some amount of hope during times of my life where I felt somewhat hopeless. Now, I'm very open about discussing my own issues. Uh, some folks might think I'm too open at times. But I've really been struggling lately with those feelings of, of hopelessness. Uh, I'm honestly not sure what kind of world we are creating for our children and for our grandchildren and for future generations. But at the rate things are progressing between global climate change and the rising tide of fascism around the world and a myriad of other issues, not to mention our cultural indifference to many of these issues, I'm very concerned about the future. As the saying goes, today's empires are tomorrow's ashes. And it kind of feels like right now we're burning a little bit. And when I feel this way, I think of communion. Now, I'm not trying to sound righteous or holier than thou or super religious here. Those of you who know me well know that that is not the case. But communion is so important to me that when I begin feeling this way, that's what I think of. I think of taking communion. I think of taking communion with a community that I love. Taking communion with a community that I share many values with and that I think of taking communion because for me, it is a ritual, it is a tradition that has connected people to the divine spirit for 2,000 years within the Christian tradition, and whether you knew it or not, even longer within other traditions. Other forms of communion have existed in religious practices and rituals pre-Christianity. And this reminds me that I am not alone. Communion, the act, the ritual, the tradition of communion, reminds me that I am not alone, that others have felt, just like I do, maybe just like you do at times. And they have found hope and renewal within this ritual that is meant to remind us of our connection to something that is larger than ourselves. Whether you want to call that God or the divine spirit or community, or as quantum physicists call it, the luminous web that connects us all, communion reminds me that I, we, are not alone in this. Communion, the Eucharist, our communal act of promise and solidarity comprised of the simplest of elements, base elements, bread and wine. Elements that, for me at least, are just as important as any other elements within my life, whether those elements are family, or friends, or art, or therapy, or any number of other things, the bread and the wine are foundational to me as a spiritual person, yes, but they are foundational for me as a person who often struggles with depression and feelings of hopelessness. And so today, I want to talk a little bit about those elements. I want to talk, I want to break communion down a little bit into its two elements of the bread and the wine. And to do that, a little history lesson. Because bread has been a staple of life around the world throughout history. And the growing of wheat, along with other crops, but the growing of wheat came to be viewed in some cultures with a kind of religious awe or religious fervor. Now, in the Paleolithic period of human history, which was from about 
20,000 BCE to 8,000 BCE. This period was distinct culturally in its reverence for the hunter. And mythologies developed around that archetype. But in the Neolithic period, which came after that from about 8,000 BCE to 4,000 BCE, things started to change. This period, the Neolithic period, was notable for the emergence of mythologies and religions revolving around the very new science of agriculture. And so storytellers began to find meaning. They moved from developing stories about the hunter and storytellers began to find meaning in the burial of the seed into the depths of the earth and how after its burial, the seed reemerged as a, a radically different form of life. This growth cycle became mythological in its meaning. And the food itself, the bread it produced, was seen as sacred in many communities. But here's the thing. Before the wheat could grow, before the bread could be placed on the table and complete, you know, this sacred cycle from seed to bread on the table, it had to be buried. The seed had to die. The seed had to be broken. And we see this metaphor played out historically in an array of mother goddess mythologies from this period, from the Sumerian goddess Ishtar, or the Egyptian goddess Isis, or even the indigenous goddesses of this land, such as the Old One or Spider Woman in the Dene tribe. These mythologies and religions spoke of and taught balance and they taught harmony emerging out of the crop life cycle. And these goddesses show us that there is no life without death. And more so that the two, life and death, are forever enmeshed. We cannot have one without the other. And with new life, catastrophe is always there. Catastrophe is essential to this growth process. Before the elements can construct something new, the old shell, the seed, has to be broken. M.C. Richards, the poet, embodies this in her poem Potter, where she writes, always we are eating and drinking Earth's body, making her dishes. Potters, like sun and stars, perform their art endowed with myth. They make the meal holy. And of course, it is not difficult to see the echoes of these goddesses in the figure and the narrative of Jesus. In our scripture passage for today, Jesus said that he is living bread, the bread of life. And his story carried on the traditions of the earth goddesses from 6,000 years earlier. His body became the seed that was broken and buried and transformed into the sacred food we symbolically partake of today through the Eucharist, through communion. But communion is about much more than simply remembering the life of Jesus. The element of bread that we eat is to also remind us that we all can be, we all should be, living bread for one another as well. That through our own struggles, through our own brokenness, through our own re-emergence as something new and sacred and whole, 
that we can be that same element. We, you and I, can be the bread of life for others. Whether we are, you know, offering friendship or an open table or just simple presence amidst despair and depression, we become living bread for others who are also hungry and in need. And so one of the things that communion does for me, one of the ways communion helps me to push back on despair, push back on feelings of hopelessness, is by reminding me of where someone was previously living bread for me, and thereby reminding me to be living bread for others. And just as farmers and storytellers in the Neolithic period keenly picked up on the mysterious transformation of the seed into a plant, some 500 years before the birth of Jesus, there were those who made a similar connection between that we talked about the bread, but those who were making the connection about the life cycle of the grapevine and the death and eventual resurrection, the connection between the grapevine and the god Dionysus, who died and rose again, who had disciples, who was the son of a god, and ultimately became known as the god of wine, the other element we will be partaking in today. And similar to the food on the table itself being seen as sacred for those worshiping in the Neolithic period, the followers of Dionysus saw the consumption of wine as an essential practice in remaining in communion with nature. And Dionysus was not just viewed as the god of wine, but Dionysus was believed to have actually dwelt within the wine that was being consumed. Sound familiar? There's a reason why wine is an element on our communion table. There's a reason why Jesus was said to have talked of being the vine, which eventually became the wine. Wine, like bread, took on a sacred dimension. It was held in reverence, partly because the fermentation process was still a mystery at this point, and this seemingly magical transformation was viewed as a gift from God. And let's be honest, for many of us, it still is seen as a gift from God, right? And because wine tasted good, and because wine made people feel good, in the early church, wine became the symbol of the community coming together in celebration. There was a social dimension to wine, as there is now today. Wine not only spoke of the communal nature with the divine, but also the communal nature with one another. Now, for some of you, this might not be new information. It may, it may not even be particularly inspirational for you. And that's okay. Because sometimes we just need to step back and examine the elements of our lives. And sometimes we need to take those elements and rebuild. And while communion can mean a lot of different things for different people, for me, at least today, it's about letting mutual love continue. It's about living in right relationship with one another, even when times are hard, even when times can seem hopeless. 
It's about committing to living life together. Even when we feel broken like the seed of wheat at the heart of the bread. It's about allowing the joy and the magic of the wine to transform our community in its own fermentation process and transitioning us from sour grapes into cups of compassion. May it be so. All right, friends. So today is the first Sunday of the month, and we are, of course, the message was about communion, and we will be joining together in the act of communion. Remember that the divine spirit seeks to be in communion with us. Similarly, there is an expectation that we be in communion with one another as God emerges out of our communal relationships and dynamics and challenges us to be world-changing, revolutionary. So by the way of this sacrament of communion, we affirm that we are committed to the divine way of love and peace through our motives, through our thoughts, our actions, and our practices in this world. This world where we pray and hope for a time where hate and judgment and disharmony and hopelessness are transformed into movements of justice and compassion and speaking life into this world. And also through this act of communion, we seek to enflesh, to give flesh to hope and love in our lives and to realize the fullness of God among us. All, everyone is invited to our table of reconciliation. We exclude nobody. However, there are also no expectations that you participate if you are not feeling led to do so. But in coming together, let us recognize our responsibility in living in love and peace with one another and all of creation so as to be joined together as one sacramental communion of body and spirit throughout this earth. And on that night, Jesus took a loaf of bread, broke it like our world is broken. And he showed us the way to new life and hope by asking us to share our bread with one another in remembrance of his own example Through the broken bread, we participate in and become the body of the Christ in the world. In like manner, Jesus took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, the vine that sustains us and links us to one another in troubled times as well as good times, and asked us to drink of that same spirit of loving kindness and uniting harmony that was in him. Through the cup of blessing, we anticipate and participate in the changing and transformative life of the Christ in the world. May it be so. For the benediction, I would like to read the words of Christian mystic Julian of Norwich. There is a treasure in the earth that is a food tasty and pleasing to the Lord. Be a gardener, dig and ditch, toil and sweat, and turn the earth upside down and seek the deepness and water the plants in time. Continue this labor and make sweet floods to run and noble and abundant fruits to spring. Take this food and drink and carry it to God as your true worship. May it be so. Amen. And everyone, please have a wonderful week. And those of you who are there in person, 
please enjoy the food. Thank you all. Love you.